everyone. This is Helena Hart. Welcome back to my Master Your Magnetism podcast. I'm talking with Diana Mandel again today. She's a licensed psychotherapist and coach who helps people get to the root of the issues they're experiencing so they can have the results they've always wanted in any area of life. And I know you help people improve not just their romantic relationships, but all of their relationships, right? That's right. I'm so looking forward to this topic. We've done, I believe, two other interviews before, and they were so popular with my audience. I knew I had to bring you back on for another one. And I recently did an Instagram story asking if anyone had any questions for us. And so many came through that I'm not going to be able to cover them all in one episode. But there was one in particular that I thought was perfect for our interview today that we already had scheduled. So it just worked out perfectly. And that is how to stop performing to get love. I think this is such a huge problem that I see out there, especially in women that I wanted to do a whole episode just on this. Do you hear this from people in your community as well? I do a lot. And unfortunately, I hear it so often from women specifically. And mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. Do you want to jump in and talk about why? That would be great. I'd love to hear that. So one of the reasons and the biggest reasons that we have is the need for validation. We seek external validation to feel good about ourselves, especially if we haven't learned to develop that internal validation. So we perform in social acceptable ways and all these things do is bring temporary approval and praise so that we can feel that reward because we're not giving it to ourselves. So we look to external things instead of looking internally to ourselves, knowing that we're intrinsically enough. We look to those outside things, whether it's a title, it's a sexy car, it's a house, it's a guy, whatever it is, we look outside of ourselves to say like, yeah, I'm enough. See, look at this outside thing versus looking inside ourselves even more so than that. Where does that come from? We have this childhood conditioning where we're raised in environments where being good and quiet or helpful is praised and assertiveness or independence is discouraged because that feels more like a masculine trait. This condition can lead to that habit of performing to meet other people's expectations. And we become so focused, let's say, on trying to be something that we think we're supposed to be, that we don't end up authentic ourselves, which means the relationships that we're in do not feel authentic. And because of trauma and abuse, it heightens also the need to control, the need for safety and trying to grasp onto that as much as we possibly can. And we become people pleasers. And again, we try to perform and over deliver overdue to overcompensate for the fact that we don't feel enough. I see that all the time. And of course, I experienced that myself in my past. It's almost like on a subconscious level, you think if I can just get this person to love me or choose me or jump over all these obstacles to be with me or overcome their own emotional unavailability or addiction or whatever it is, that means that I'm worthy and valuable. That means I'm enough as I am. And it's just a game you're never going to win. I've certainly never seen anyone win that game. I didn't win the game that way myself. Do you see that as well? I do. And I didn't either. I had a lot of trauma growing up and because it was not healed properly, I couldn't find the right help until I went through my own coaching program, which we'll talk about another time. I was performing and I was spending so much time faking my own happiness versus taking that time and actually figuring out what makes me happy. And we don't realize that people pleasing is actually manipulating because you're trying to have someone think differently than you in performing and saying yes to everything. We need to set boundaries. We need to learn to say no. And it's not just saying no, because that feels very difficult to go from yes, 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 to just no. But one thing that I tell my clients that I think is really helpful, and it helped me, I was a very bad people pleaser. It's not always a no. Sometimes it's going to be a no, but other times it's going to be a not right now, right? Mm -hmm. So the yes or no thing is just very black and white. It can be gray and just say not right now. We need to communicate our needs and not apologize for that. That's advocating for yourself. But that's also assuming that you feel worthy enough to advocate for your needs. If my husband doesn't know what the heck works for me and what frankly doesn't work for me, we've got a problem. So it's you advocating for yourself, communicating your needs, setting boundaries, building that self-worth. It's okay if where you are right now, you're thinking to yourself, okay, not good. I clearly have this issue. All of us have fears and insecurities within us. And a lot of us have a fear of rejection. We don't want to feel unloved. We don't want to feel as if we don't belong. We want to 
kind of feel as though someone else, frankly, anyone, even guys we don't like, we still want them to like us. And that's just an ego play. And what we do in turn to not have that happen and avoid that, we downplay our needs, our opinions, our desires to, again, fit in, to be accepted, whatever it may be. It's a big problem. And we need to be more authentic and real. I mean, if you think about all the guys you've dated, let's say, regardless of what your situation is now, clearly there have been guys that you haven't liked. And it's not, you know, a character thing or a moral thing. It's just we don't always gel with people and that's okay. So often we're not ourselves as a defense mechanism. If I'm not myself and you reject me, I don't care because I'm not being myself anyway. If I am being myself and you reject me, it's because of me and they're not going to be able to handle that. People aren't going to like you. Again, it's just part of life and it doesn't mean a bad or flawed thing. It's just they're not for you and that makes sense. It happens. It's that inner core confidence where we don't look to external things, where we don't feel like we have to perform. We don't have to overdo something or overcompensate to feel enough. It's so true. So performing to get love or to earn someone's attention or affection, you mentioned downplaying your needs, not honoring your own boundaries and standards, just going along with whatever the other person wants, people pleasing, any other symptoms that someone might be performing to get love? Because I think a lot of people can do this without realizing it. It's just so in their nature, right? Yeah, it's wanting to say what you think is right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that it's authentic. And we all want authentic relationships with people so badly. A lot of people don't have them. Or you can be raw and real and honest with each other. Obviously still be respectful, but be really honest. When you want that respect from someone else and that authenticity, you need to be able to give that to yourself. It's exhausting, by the way, performing, because I've done it. And I did it a lot when I was younger, where I would have a smile plastered across my face. But internally, I felt so yucky. I was really angry, really sad. And even though, you know, never saw that really, I felt that way. And Mm -hmm. I desperately tried to cover that up with cute outfits and nice bags and makeup and hair done. And like I said, a smile plastered across my face. I didn't want people to see the ugly that I felt. And I really felt as though I was too damaged to be loved by anyone. So I was always dating guys that were just shitty, if I'm being honest. And some were really, you know, not good guys at all. And some were kind of just meh. There wasn't anything wrong. It was just kind of like meh. But it was never what I really wanted because I I never felt that I was enough, but I was constantly performing, terrified that people would see what I was actually feeling inside. So I would end up, like I said, performing and it was exhausting because if I don't feel a certain way, but I'm acting another way, it's really out of alignment. And that's partially why I ended up with bad guys. Part of it, obviously, because I didn't think I deserved better, but part of it was because I was feeling one way internally, but trying to overcompensate so drastically for what I felt internally, externally, so people wouldn't actually see all the ugliness I felt inside that I lost who I was. It's like one girl on the outside, one girl on the inside. It was kind of like an identity crisis for a long time. And I didn't like the girl friends that I had in my life. I didn't like at a different business and fashion at the time. Nothing felt me. And I was always looking through the lens of my trauma and making decisions and having thoughts and attracting certain people from that lens, but not the Diana lens. It was like the 1.0 me was very much coming out. I didn't realize it because like I said, I was trying to pretend and and fake it and hide it and repress it. But the more I was doing that, it was almost like a pressure cooker situation where a lot of it just came out. The more I sort of stuffed it down, the more it wanted to come up and the more I tried to overcompensate and it just never gelled, didn't work. Like I said, I went through my own coaching program and really got my shit together until I was able to do that. My whole life felt just out of alignment, not genuine and real. It didn't feel like the real me. It felt like the little wounded girl inside me that needed to be healed was me making decisions and nothing felt right. I mean, truly, until I was able to heal that little girl and not feel like I needed to not only follow the rules of what women, quote unquote, you know, are supposed to do in that kind of soft, demure, proper type of way, but I just didn't want to be told how to be, how to look, how to dress, what to do. We're always told, and I just had this conversation this morning with a client, we're always told the opposite. I was, long story, but I was ill in high school and I was put on stuff and I was going through puberty as it was. So I ended up gaining a lot of weight and it took many years actually for it to dissipate and get out of my body. So I was just really bloated if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. So I had extra weight. So then I was too fat. Then when that went away, naturally it took many years, like I said, now everyone tells me I'm too thin. I mean, no one's ever happy. Mm -hmm. Everyone's judging you regardless of what you do or don't do. So you might as well just do you. And it feels so much better. It's so much less exhausting. And as women, we play so many roles. We do so many 
many things. We have so many responsibilities. We put ourselves last on our own list constantly. I talk about this all the time. And we were just talking about this too. We have kids, we've got businesses, we've got husbands, they have businesses, they have things going on. We've got families, we've got friends. We play so many roles and juggle so many balls in our life. Us being last on our own list and not taking our mental health as seriously as we should and getting the proper help to deal with that. And we all need to do that. In my opinion, we again, try to play to those roles and being perfect. And there is no such thing. So we never feel like we're enough and we're constantly chasing to try to get to that place. Uh, I can relate to that so much. I cannot even tell you (laughs) your whole story, basically. And I think that we can't be the only two people in the world who have ever gone through something like that. I think most women in my community or people in general who are drawn to this work can so relate to everything you said. So that was super powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'd love to get into how you turn things around or how someone can stop performing. This is why I was so excited to talk to you today. I was telling you before we started recording that I can talk all day long about where this comes from and why it's not good to perform and try and earn someone's love, but I'd love to get your take on exactly how someone can start to turn this around. There's obviously multiple things that can be done. The most important thing and the most universal thing I can say is to heal the inner child that's within you that's trying to be that pleaser, that's trying to do whatever they have to do to be praised. And that means that you're starving for it yourself and that you need to give it to yourself first. So when you heal that little girl and you look in the mirror and you talk to yourself as a woman that you are now and picture her and talk to her, you got to give her that validation, that love, that support, feeling heard and seen in a way that you probably never ever have before. And that can be based off parents, but it also can be extended family, coaches, teachers. People say stupid shit because they're projecting their own stuff onto you. I've had clients be told, you're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not blank enough, whatever it is, athletic enough. And we're constantly being told those things. Then we look for proof that all those things are true. And we spend our life doing that. So it handicaps us. If we want to look through the lens of who we actually are versus looking through the lens of our trauma, we need to actually resolve some of that trauma. And an easy way to do that just at home by yourself do it at night just because you can get very emotional going through that process you need to tell that beautiful amazing smart fabulous woman that you are now the little girl who's scared and afraid and insecure and unsure of herself all the things that you are now all of those attributes lead to you not being yourself and performing and feeling like you need to do that when you heal that little girl she shows up so differently and it's going to take time I would start once a week for now again do it at night literally look in the mirror. It's not easy to do. But also in those little moments that we have, so that's like a big thing you can do. But then in those little moments, I used to look in the mirror and be like, "Mm, don't like that. Don't like that. Nope, that's not good either. I act so differently. I reframe and redirect a lot of my thoughts. Thoughts aren't necessarily facts. So when we get more clear and have more self-awareness of just what inner tape is playing in our heads, because we really have no idea. We're so used to it. It's so familiar to us that it just kind of goes on autopilot. Once you become more aware, aware and have that self-awareness. It's almost like, I know it sounds a little strange, but it's almost like a little bird sitting on your shoulder. Just curious. Don't be judgy about it. That's not going to help us, but just be curious about the things that you're saying, the things that you're doing, the tape that's playing in your head, the thoughts that you have about life, love, yourself, your body, who you are, your identity, and so forth. You're going to see that there's a lot there. And for me, when I was going through this whole process myself, my goal was to love myself because everyone talks about self-love, but really I needed to learn to like myself before I need to learn to love myself. So the like needed to happen first. And to do that with the respect and adoration and love I had for myself, that had to come from liking myself first. And it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. We have to be very patient, very kind to ourselves, almost treat ourselves like little kids in a way, you know, with little kid gloves at first, but you start to feel more and more empowered. And the last thing I'll say, because again, there's a million things I could say. The last thing I'll say, and this is a huge one, is what is that 2.0? you? Who is she? What does she look like? What does she act like? What does she dress like? Who's in her life? What does she say yes to? What does she say no to? Get super clear. Write every single thing down from like the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Everything that you're doing, saying, acting like, living like, choosing, dressing like, you know, who's in your life. Get super clear on that and look at where you are now to where you want to be and fill in those gaps and those holes to get to that place regardless of where you are now to where you want to be. So at least you have benchmarks and you know where you're trying to go because it 
it seems like we know, but it's very abstract when I get into it with my clients and kind of push back. It's like, well, you know, I mean, I kind of want, there's just a lot of stumbling words. So when you're very clear and you know exactly what you're doing, you know when you're out of alignment and you can constantly ask yourself, is this a 2.0 version of me? And it's going to seem like a lot because you're going to have to ask yourself that a lot, but it gets less and less because you don't need it because you're starting to act like that woman and you know when you are and you know when you're not. And it's not going to be just with men. It's your life in general. I love these super practical tips. That's why I was just dying to get your opinion on this today. I'm going to start doing that myself. I think I could definitely use a little bit of that right now. And I think we all could really. It's so true what you said about being in alignment with who you are and your values and what you want. I see so many people saying consciously, I deserve the best. This is unacceptable. I'm not available for this. But then they're accepting crumbs from a man, for example, or they're burning themselves out. I can relate to that (laughs) and doing something so much and striving and working so hard that they forget to take care of themselves. It's that putting yourself last on your priority list that you talked about. So it can be so easy to say one thing, but it's your vibe and your energy and your actions that people and the universe, whatever you want to call it, is picking up on here. And you're just attracting more experiences like that. You're just kind of wearing a sign that says, disappoint me or use me if deep down you're doing that to yourself, right? Exactly. And that's where that inner work needs to come into play because our childhood plays out in our romantic relationships. So we're little wounded children making decisions as adult women until we deal with those wounds properly, but constantly know there's different iterations of our life. You don't wake up one day and say like, oh my God, I'm healed. This is amazing. It's going to take on a life of its own. And the first second you think you're healed, the universe kind of shows you something and you're triggered and it's like, oh God, it's not what I thought. So it's a constant self-development journey and commitment, but you know that when you do this work, it's lifelong. Each rung that you walk up the ladder to up-level your life, a different version of you is needed, more clarity, more confidence. So if you're not doing the work, you're just staying the same or worse, reverting backward and self-sabotage comes into play. So dealing with these wounds and the core and getting to the root and ripping it out so that we're not just taking a band-aided approach to things is everything. And doing these little small things that seem like they're not that big of a deal. But when there's repetition, you start to create new habits, break patterns and show up differently. Your energy is everything. And like I said, when I was constantly trying to pretend and fake how I felt and was able to drop that mask and accept myself for who I was, but then also work on myself at the same time, which sounds a little counterintuitive, but does make sense. You're really unstoppable. When you know what your flaws are, you know what your weaknesses are, you're dealing with them and you really have that inner core confidence confidence and you've done a lot of the healing, basically undoing and redoing a lot of the stuff that's gone on in your life. I'm so glad you brought that up. I was just going to ask you about that. The balance between accepting yourself, loving yourself as you are, and continuing to work on things that need to be worked on. I know we've talked in previous episodes about what I call the self-help trap or the healing trap, where people think there's this endless amount of work they need to do on themselves, and it becomes an avoidance. It's a way that they keep themselves stuck, where they never actually get the results they want in the real world, because they think they have to read every book and take every course and go on every retreat and things like that, and they just never fully feel like they're enough. And that's another form of striving and trying to get to some top of the mountain that doesn't exist, in my opinion and experience. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I tend to think of it like self-improvement fatigue, where Mm -hmm. it's just too much. And it's not that every single thing that you do needs to be analyzed. If you and I are having dinner and I want Chinese and you want Italian, we don't need to analyze that. It's just a craving that we have. So some things need to be left alone. For some things, you're not necessarily going to know the root of why things happen. But while that's helpful to some degree, it's more so what are we going to do about it now that we know that it exists? So it is that interesting dichotomy and almost harmony between between accepting who you are, but you can accept who you are intrinsically and know who you are, the strengths, the weaknesses, because we all have both, but then also know that with the weaknesses, what is okay and going to be there versus what's really not serving you and is creating problems. And you need to decipher for yourself, possibly with a coach, mentor, therapist as well, if that's something that you'd like to do. I love that idea. And I like it not because of what I do for a living really, but because you need that outside perspective, someone who sees things that you don't see 
frequency and sees those blind spots, right? Every therapist, there's a reason why. But again, it's knowing that you feel that you're enough, just how you are. You don't need all those external things. Like we said, you feel like you're enough, but knowing that in order to advance to that next level in every area of your life, a different, not better necessarily, but a different version of you is needed. A more empowered, a more clear version of you is needed to get to that next place, whatever that looks like. That's where the additional work comes into play. So if you're not growing, you're just, again, staying the same or worse or burning backwards. So you need to have that balance between accepting who you are and feeling enough as you are, but still wanting to tap into certain parts of yourself that you possibly hadn't before to have the things that you've never had before. This is so powerful. I'm just loving everything you're sharing here. Would you like to recap these points? I know we talked so much about what this looks like and you gave some very specific tools on how to stop performing to get love. Any sort of recap you want to do or last words of wisdom you have to share here today? I'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Let's learn to set boundaries. You have to Mm -hmm. learn to say no or not right now. We want to communicate our needs, though you need to know what your needs are to be able to communicate them. Think about what that 2.0 version of you actually looks like, but get super, super clear. Don't write down five things. I need to really understand fully as if it's almost like a script of a character in a movie. If you want to really embody that, you need to know exactly who this person is. So you got to get very clear on that. We want to build self-worth be very careful and conscious of the thoughts that you have, the words that you choose. Everything comes down to the words that we choose and the images that we associate with them. So like that little bird analogy I was given, when you put that little bird on your shoulder, you start to see for yourself, again, with curiosity, not judgment, the words that you choose, the things that you say to yourself and how you actually speak to yourself, that inner tape, that inner dialogue that we have. The more aware you are of that, the more you can kind of have that starting point you know what that looks like. And then you're able to work with yourself from there and do the mirror work. It is so healing. It is so helpful. I literally do it every single week and I've been doing this for years. So if you think, you know, oh, I'll do it a couple of times and I should be fine. You need to do it constantly. Cause like I said, if you're really set on up leveling your life, you're going to need to really continue to go there because some of that worthiness stuff, you know, is still there. It's scary to up level. It's scary because you think you're afraid of success. You're afraid of failure. A lot of things come up with that when you're doing this work and you're doing it consistently, that's when going up the ladder just becomes so much easier and smoother. And ultimately pretending to do anything is exhausting. It's disingenuous. You're going to end up with guys and frankly, relationships with people in general that are not congruent, that don't fulfill you and don't allow you to live the life that you deserve. You'll never feel that true love ever. It's so true. The kind of people you attract when you're not being your true authentic self and you're just trying to earn their love are not going to treat you right. They're going to be a reflection of how you feel about yourself on the inside. And it's just a never ending cycle. So I love everything you shared here today. Thank you so much for coming on. And where can people find you and learn more about what you do? Follow me on Instagram. I'm super active on there. It's my name, Diana Mandel. A lot of really cool things coming out that I'm working on and you'll see a lot in stories and reels. Yes, I follow you on Instagram. I love all your reels and everything you have to share on there. So I'll include information on that in the show notes. And thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure you're following my podcast so you don't miss any new episodes. And feel free to leave me a rating or write a review if my podcast episodes or videos have been helpful for you. Five-star ratings help my podcast out a lot. It helps it get recommended to more people so we can spread this message of self-love and empowerment and tuning into your authentic self and radiating that out so you'll naturally become magnificent to anything you desire in life and love. Thank you so much again, Diana. I'm really looking forward to bringing you on again soon. I know we discussed some other really amazing topics that we can talk about. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks for having me. Bye everyone. See you next time. The biggest mistake women make when a man is hot and cold, acting distant, or pulling away is something called a connection barrier, and it only pushes him further away. If you'd like to read about what a connection barrier is so you don't accidentally make it, go to forever1234.com. Again, that's forever1234.com.